Thank you, Allison. Please join me in the call to worship this morning. It's found in your morning bulletin. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world. Do all things for the sake of the gospel. He called out, Who shall I send? I answered, Here I am, send me. Um, the hymn this morning is Pass It On, number 477. And so please rise in body or spirit as we sing. join me in the unison prayer of invocation. Eternal light, who has folded back the curtain of darkness and caused the dawn of a new day to brighten the earth, we ask you to gladden our hearts with your light. Give us the light of faith that doubts may be dispelled like the mists of the morning. Give us the radiance of the hope that we may reach toward to and have you admired. Give us the illumination of love, that we may perfectly love you and worthily manifest your holy name. We offer our prayer in the name of him, who is the light of the world. Amen. The first scripture reading today is um, Psalm 119, verse 105, and it's found on page 557. It's just one sentence, so, anyway, but it's worth its weight in gold. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. As we head into a time for morning prayer, I invite you to take a moment to take a deep breath. We live in a world that is busy and bustling and often don't calm ourselves before we enter into a time of talking to God. I invite you to share the names that are on your hearts this morning, whether they be 
uh, names of joy or names of sorrow, but those that we wish to lift this morning in prayer. Agnes. Agnes. Bill. Bill. Pamela. Pamela. Melinda. Melinda. Mary, Bob, Bob. as we head into our morning prayer, I invite you to take a moment to share the names that are on our hearts that we're not quite ready to share aloud and to lift up the names that have been shared aloud. Gracious, holy, and loving God, we live in a world with light and with dark. We know that in the light we feel joy, that your presence is abundant, and that our knowledge of you is overflowing. In the lightness we are able to see the path ahead of us. In the lightness we are able to move forward no matter what. But when the darkness comes, Lord, we come to you, bringing you those fears, anxieties, tragedies, and challenges, sometimes unable to see you in those moments, sometimes unable to find you in the darkness. This morning, as we lift these names in prayer to you, O oh God, we ask that you surround each individual person with your light. If they are in the darkness, we ask that you reach out to them so that they might feel you, even if they can't see you. That you might be present in the darkness to shine a light where we cannot see. And for those in the light, we ask that you surround them in love, that they might sing your praises and be a light for another who's lost on the journey. Amen. We also pray this morning the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join me in this morning words of assurance. God of mystery and of judgment, who has made us to be the salt and light in a tasteless, shadowless world, guide us in this time of worship. Grant us understanding and spiritual discernment so that others may see your good works through us. Give you the glory and be moved to serve you. Amen. As we head into our time of offering, I invite you to think on these words. In the midst of struggles, God is present in times of grief, in times of weariness, and in times of tragedy. God weeps with us. When we fail to be the people that we know we should be, when we sin, God's grace envelops us. God beckons us to live within God's unfolding and undeniable realm of love. As the offering plate comes around this morning, I offer you to respond in openness to all that we've been given. Today, I invite you to do something just a little bit different. I invite you to place your financial offerings in the plate, but also, and more importantly, I invite you to place your hand over it 
and silently take a moment to commit to God to use your gifts, your talents, and your heart to further that unfolding love of God here on earth. This morning's offering will now be given and gratefully received. give the God of all grace. Help us to make the most of the spiritual gifts that you have given us as we give your financial resources. We are grateful for the gift of your spirit to all of us. You have given us each different spiritual gifts to help you and to help your church grow in spirituality. We are here to serve you financially through our giving and spiritually through our ministry with our gifts. May it be so. Amen.
invite you now to take a moment to say good morning and to share the peace with those that are around you. The Lord be with you. I think we missed the doxology, but um, do we want to say it now? Oh, we did? I'm sorry. I'm off, t off today. The gospel reading today is um, Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16, and it's found on page 880 of the Pew Bible. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how can, it set, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket but on the lamps stand, and it gives light to all the house, all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good deeds and your good work and give glory to your Father in heaven. God bless these words. Friends, will you please pray with me? God, I ask that you speak through me, and I ask that you speak in spite of me. I pray that the words that are heard today are your words, and that they meet your people where they need it most. Amen. We live in a world of darkness. Think about all that you see on the news each and every day. You see, when I was younger and in school, 9-11 happened. And on that day and in the days to follow, constantly we heard, this will change the world forever. Darkness had come to our doorstep, and we felt like it was the moment where everything changed. I challenge that thought today because darkness continues to come to our doorstep day in and day out as we turn on the news and hear of all the things that are happening in the world. There is a war going on in some countries. There are school shootings and shootings of all kinds in all different places. It seems to be happening more and more frequently when you turn on the news in the morning, you are inundated with the darkness that can feel so overwhelming and that fills our screens every morning and fills them again every evening. You see, the problem is that we've become accustomed to the darkness. We're so used to it that we turn on the news and don't bat an eye when we see that yet another building has been taken over Yet another war has been begun. Yet another tragedy has struck too close to home. It's something that we become accustomed to because it happens day in and day out. Darkness can always be found, especially if you're looking for it. You see, darkness happens in my life every day. Being a chaplain at Yale New Haven Hospital means that I never meet anyone on the happiest day of their life. 
I meet everyone on a day that they didn't expect, typically in darkness. Yet light persists there. Light is present in those darkest moments. Sometimes it's just a glimmer of a spark. When we look at the scripture from today in Matthew, it says, you are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. It is important that we take note of the fact that God is using present tense. You, today, here in this moment, you are the light of the world. The light of the world wasn't something that has happened or that's going to happen or someone who has come or someone who's going to come. The light of the world is in each and every one of us here in this place, in this moment, right now. So often we forget to translate scripture back to its original origin or back to another time when they would have used different words. But if you translate light back into Greek, it actually, the basis of it is phos, which is the basis of the word photo or photography. Photo and photography, when translated, is light drawing. Now, looking around the sanctuary, I am one of the younger individuals in the room, so if I remember Polaroid cameras, then all of you should remember Polaroid cameras. A Polaroid camera, when you took the picture, came out dark. Darkness was all that you saw, and it took a minute. You had to shake it, give it a second, let the light find it, and it would develop right in front of your eyes. Now initially, when that photo was developing, it usually was a little bit fuzzy, hard to see, and then as it developed further, you were able to see more and more clearly what was happening. You see, for many of us, we are like a Polaroid picture. In the darkness or in that fuzzy phase, trying to find the clear picture that God has for us. We are in the foss of the light. We are in the photo. Now, if you look at John 8, 12, it says, Then Jesus spoke again say, to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. A photo represents an image that was ahead of us. How amazing. That if, God, if Jesus said, I am the light of the world, and is now saying, you are the light of the world, that we represent that photo of Jesus here on earth every day. No matter what phase of that photo we are in ourselves, we represent that light to the world that Jesus was when Jesus was here. Think about it this way. The sun is a light. The moon is actually a reflection of the light. Much like that, Jesus is the sun and we are the moon. Now every once in a while, the moon gets in the way of the sun and darkness falls over. So where are you getting in the way of your own light? Where are you not reflecting Jesus in your life, but instead pushing against it? Where are you causing an eclipse that maybe you just need to step out of the way and see the reflection once again? Let me explain it to you in a little bit of a different way. Some of us are auditory learners. Some of us are visual learners. So you are the light of the world. Jesus has put that light inside of you when you were born, and you can last forever. The problem is that you're part of the world. Sometimes that world is easy, and you can move about it freely. But other times there are pressures that come into our lives living here on earth that can get in the way of finding our light. You see, those pressures of the world could be things like mental illness. Or maybe they're a breakup or a divorce. Or maybe they're a separation or family anxieties. Or maybe they're not getting the job, or not having enough money, or not being able to pay the bills, or all the stresses that continue to fall into place. 
It's hard when we're in the world and surrounded by the pressures of it to move freely. It's even more so in the pressures of the world that it is hard to find our light. For we know that when we're surrounded by the darkness and surrounded by the pressure, it's next to impossible to see the light that we are supposed to be being to one another. You see, it's so easy to get lost, to get lost in the water of the world. But what happens when we can't find a spark? What happens when someone takes the pressures of the world away? We still can't light because we don't have a spark. We can't light our light. We can't let the love of God show because we can't see it for ourselves. The interesting thing, though, is that there's others who are not in the tragedy of life at the same time. There's others that have not been in the darkness at the same time. Though we all go through the darkness of the world, we are not all in the darkness at once. So the thing is, when we lose our spark, all we have to do is find somebody who has one, and we can light our light again. It's so often that we're lost in the darkness that we can't see God. Time and time and time again in the hospital I hear, why me? Why now? Why this? I can't feel God's presence here. I don't know what this plan is and what God has for me because I am overwhelmed by what's happening to me right now. In that moment, I can shine a light to my patients and say, even though you have no spark, I promise that God's light is always with you. You see, in those moments of darkness, God doesn't turn on each of us. Instead of turning his back, he's present. I'll leave you with this thought. In the world, there's darkness and there's light. In the word hate, there are four letters. There's also four letters in the world, word love. There are seven letters in the word enemy, but there are also seven letters in the word, word friends. There are five letters in the word lying, but there's also five in the word truth. There's three letters in the word cry, but also in the word joy. Ten letters in the word, word negativity, but also ten letters in the word positivity. It's not easy to choose light in this world. It is much easier to be enveloped by the darkness. Impossible? No. At times, seems like it's unattainable. What happens when we feel like there is no light in our life? What happens when our spark is out? Try to find a light that's right around the corner that can help you to relight your own. I pray that God is with each of us, whether we are the light today or whether we are struggling with the darkness. May it be so. And amen. I invite you now to stand and join in our closing hymn this morning, uh, Ours the Journey, which is in your hymnal on page 458.
you may be seated. Or, oh God, pretend today never exists. I'm sorry. Okay, please join me in unison in the Common Commission. Let us go forth into the world in peace, being of good courage, holding fast to that which is good, rendering to no one evil for evil, strengthening the faint-hearted, supporting the weak, helping the afflicted, honoring all people, loving and serving the Lord, and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. As we get ready to go forth from this place, we do so knowing that God came to save you, that God came to redeem you, and that God is with you always. If you are in the darkness, reach out to someone who has a spark. And if you are a spark, shine your light so that those in the darkness can always find you. Amen.